Alright, today we're doing more hacking attacks, but this time we're focusing on initial access. How do hackers break in? What are the sneakiest, most effective ways they get that first foothold? Stick around as we rank the most notorious initial access techniques and break down how they work. People spend so much time obsessing over niche exploits and fancy post-exploitation techniques, but none of that matters if you can't even get in. Initial access is everything. If you don't know how to breach the target in the first place, all those advanced attacks you spend hours learning are completely useless. This is the most crucial step in hacking, because without it, you're stuck on the outside looking in. First up, zero-day exploits. Using zero-day vulnerabilities in things like VPNs, web apps, or authentication services is super powerful. The downside is that finding or buying fresh zero days is expensive. But if you're quick to use a newly disclosed CVE, you can catch defenders off guard before they patch. It's like musical chairs, except instead of losing a seat, someone loses their entire network. S tier. Phishing is the undisputed king of initial access, and for good reason. Whether it's email spoofing, HTML smuggling, or MFA bypassing phishing kits, attackers have refined social engineering to an art form. No matter how much security training companies put in place, there's always that one person who clicks the link, and that's all it takes. What makes phishing so effective is its sheer versatility. It can be used to drop malware, steal credentials, or even hijack active sessions. If an attacker chains phishing with session theft or token hijacking, it's often game over before the victim even realizes what happened. Phishing isn't just effective, it's reliable, and that's why it sits firmly in S tier. Credential stuffing is one of the easiest and most effective initial access techniques because people just don't stop reusing passwords. With massive data breaches constantly leaking credentials, attackers barely have to put in any effort. They just take known username password pairs and try them on different sites. And the worst part? It works way more often than it should. MFA blocks most basic credential stuffing attempts, but that doesn't mean attackers are out of options. If they can steal a session token instead of a password, MFA becomes irrelevant. Combine this with techniques like cookie theft or token replay, and suddenly they're in with zero friction. Simple, scalable, and scarily effective solid S tier. LFI, or local file inclusion, is one of those underrated but seriously dangerous vulnerabilities. If a web app lets you include arbitrary files, an attacker can often snatch config files, API keys, database credentials, or even SSH keys, all without ever dropping a payload. It's a low-effort, high-reward attack that can quickly spiral out of control. What makes LFI even nastier is how it can be chained with other exploits. Log poisoning can turn it into remote code execution, and in some cases, it leads straight to a full system takeover. It's not as flashy as RCE, but it's just as capable of breaking an application wide open. Solid I tier. SQL injection. If you find SQLi on a login page, you can pull credentials or even execute commands to get full access. Some companies still let attackers type random SQL commands into login fields in 2025. How? We don't know either. B tier. Malicious attachments. Dropping macro-enabled office docs, PDFs, or LNK files in emails is a classic move. But Windows Defender and email filters are better than ever. So you need better payload delivery like OneNote Abuse or ISO bypasses. Still solid though. B tier. Watering hole attacks. Hacking a site that your target visits regularly and planting malware is a nice way to get initial access. The problem is that it takes time and targeting the right site is tricky. Works well in nation-state attacks, but not as common for random cybercriminals. B tier, USB drops. Leaving infected USB drives in parking lots or office lobbies still works, but not nearly as well as it used to. Modern OS protections and basic security awareness have made this attack less effective. It's fun, but unreliable. C tier, public exploit scanning. Grabbing the latest CVEs from ExploitDB or GitHub and mass scanning the internet can sometimes get you into low-hanging fruit. The problem is that everyone else is doing it too, and defenders patch fast. C tier. Brute force attacks. Nobody should still be vulnerable to basic brute force attacks in 2025. Rate limiting, account lockouts, and MFA make this a waste of time. The only time it works is against ancient systems or misconfigured login portals. D tier. Social engineering over the phone. 
calling IT help desks, and pretending to be an employee to reset passwords or get access used to be a great trick. But companies have caught on, and it's much harder to pull off now. Still possible but not reliable. D-tier, rogue access points. Setting up a fake Wi-Fi network near a target can trick users into connecting, allowing for credential theft and traffic interception. Not always practical but works in high-value scenarios. Supply chain attacks. Compromising a vendor or software provider to infiltrate multiple targets at once is extremely effective. Companies trust their suppliers, so poisoned updates or backdoored software can bypass defenses entirely. S-tier. Remote file inclusion is like the weaker cousin of LFI. In theory, it can lead to remote code execution by letting an attacker include and execute a malicious file from an external source. But in practice, it's rarely seen these days. Modern security measures, like disabling remote file wrappers and enforcing strict input validation, make it a much less viable attack. It's situational at best and not nearly as reliable as other methods. D tier. Fake captures are one of those social engineering tricks that seem ridiculous until they work. The idea is simple, trick users into downloading and running a malicious payload by disguising it as a required capture verification. While most people would spot the scam, all it takes is one careless click to hand over access. If an attacker delivers malware this way and chains it with privilege escalation, it can lead straight to RCE. Not the most consistent method, but when it works, it's direct and effective. B tier. If you guys enjoyed this video and uh, you want to learn everything hacky related, and you want my honest tools from all of the tools out there for actual hacking. We have several courses out there from beginner to advanced that we have a ton of cheat sheets and we have a community that is absolutely just learning about hacking all day, every day. And I think it will be very, very fun. So don't forget to check out the link in the description. And thank you so much for watching the video. Have a nice one. Take care.